In the scripture lessons appointed for today, Moses tells the Israelites that they are called to be a priestly kingdom and a holy people. Jesus in the gospel text sends out the disciples as laborers into the harvest. For us in baptism, we too are anointed for ministry, sharing God's compassion with our needy world. We are gathered for worship this day the third Sunday of Pentecost. We worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that, overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We hear God's word, a reading from the 19th chapter of the book of Exodus. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim into the, and entered the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, Everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Here ends the reading. The psalmist says, Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. As our Lord has promised, the harvest is plentiful, for we have experienced the bounty of your good and gracious gifts. Let us pray the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers into his harvest. In Christ's holy name we pray, amen. I wonder how many of you can keep silent about a good deal. Now think for a moment. When was the last time that you found a great bargain, a super deal, and who did you tell about it? You bought a new car and you wanted to show it off. A new supermarket opened and you found bargains galore. You found a new website and word spread like wildfire. News that seemed too good to be true and didn't you just have to go and tell someone? Our Sunday papers are always full of pictures of brides who announce their Saturday weddings, and underneath the nuptial announcements are the pictures of all those newly born in Charleston hospitals during the past week. Good news of marriages, good news of birth, all splashed across our papers for the whole world to see. And in this morning's gospel text, we find Jesus traveling from village to village, from one town to the next. And what is he doing? Sharing good news. In particular, I like the way that the Revised Standard Version says it. Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. The word gospel, as we know, is a word that we use almost every week, and it comes from the Greek word euangelion, which means, literally means tidings of good news. And then in the German, the word gospel is translated as gut spiel, which, which means in all languages, good news. And, and what Jesus is doing is just what we all like to do with good news. He's telling everybody about it. The kingdom of heaven has come near, Jesus proclaims. And isn't that good news? You can almost sense his excitement. See, see the joy that's beaming on his face. Feel the radiance of his enthusiasm as he shares with people that the kingdom of God is waiting and resting at their doorstep. So from city to city, Jesus goes, hamlet after hamlet, in synagogues and crowds, everywhere that he can think of, Jesus goes and shares with people who have waited long and earnestly for the inbreaking of God's kingdom. That now, the good news is that that kingdom is at hand. But then here comes the kicker in this passage. In light of this tremendous good news which is proclaimed and presented, Jesus finds few, very few, to carry the message to others. What a searing indictment Jesus issues. The harvest is plentiful, he announces, but the laborers are few. In the midst of this human society which seem so apt and willing to pass along good news of almost any variety. 
When confronted with the proclamation of God's kingdom, God's grace given freely and unconditionally, the abundance, the overabundance of God's love, plentiful for the harvest, Jesus finds that the laborers are few. There are opportunities available, and Jesus is looking for a few good women and men to share the work and share the joy of the kingdom. Now, I think that that probably raises some implications for us. First of all, it says that as Jesus comes proclaiming this good news, that first of all, it has to take root within us. You, you and I, we, we need to look for the richness of the gospel's meaning in, in and throughout our daily lives. You see, the, the kingdom of God will never be good news for us as long as it's, it's just merely intellectual assent. Rather, it must impact us in some sort of meaningful way. As Jesus came proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, he said, he said that the kingdom was good news for the poor. It was the proclamation of release for those who were held captive. It was recovery of sight for the blind. It was setting at liberty everyone who was oppressed. It was the announcement of the year of God's favor in and with his people. The kingdom that Jesus came proclaiming was not a kingdom presented in a vacuum. Rather, it was the healing presence of God in the midst of human life. So for this news of Jesus to be good news, it must first and foremost be good news to us. It must be news that speaks to our everyday lives right in the very spots that we need to hear and feel it the most. The second implication raised by this passage, it seems to me, is that we pray. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers, Jesus says. God's kingdom must, must become a part of our innermost thoughts and concerns, a, a conviction that runs and ruminates inside of us and, until we can stand to remain silent no longer. Jesus says, pray therefore the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers. Let the good news of God's kingdom find such, such a center in your thoughts and prayers that the richness of the kingdom has an energy and excitement in your life that spills over into proclamation. Rob Bell says in his book, Velvet Elvis, uh, book which in his words challenges people to rethink faith and the Bible and hope and love and everything else. Bell says that God has an incredibly high view of people. That God believes that people are capable of amazing things. He says, I've been told that I need to believe in Jesus, which is a good thing, but, but what I am learning as I read passages such as the call of the disciples is that Jesus believes in me. I've been told that I have to have faith in God, which is a good thing, but what I am learning is that God has faith in me. I thought, you see, as I considered this passage, Imagine if each one of us were to invite just one friend to, to hear the good news of God. Before very long, the sanctuary would be overflowing with, with disciples for Jesus. Jesus said, people of God, the harvest is plentiful. There are opportunities available for good women and men to spread the message of God's good news. But the laborers are few. Pray therefore that the Lord of the harvest will send out laborers into his harvest. We come this day to hear and receive God's good news and to let it impact on our lives. We come this day to pray so that our faith might 
overflow into, into daily life and into proclamation. And we come this day to be commissioned once again to go into all the world teaching and baptizing all people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Pray that the Lord might send us. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Holy One, you bring us together and you call us your own. Bless us and all who continue to, to help us to grow in faith. Guide your church that we might be a holy people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, the whole earth is yours. Inspire us to cherish and to care for all that you have provided. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Holy One, you gaze upon your creation and you call it good and look upon each person naming them as a child of God. And yet we have erred and have created divisions in our world. In places of conflict, raise up leaders who work to develop lasting peace and reconciliation. And help us to have opened eyes and hearts ready to see and respect the worth and dignity of all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, protect and defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick. Feed all who hunger, empower all whose voices go unheard, and help us respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Holy One, you bring all people to yourself. We give thanks for those who have gone before us. Sustain us now in your mission until the day you bear us up to join with the saints in light. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places. Offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God. You have revealed your glory as the glory also of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, three persons equal in majesty, undivided in splendor. And so, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. 
He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We are invited to come together around this table as those who belong to the household of Christ, sisters and brothers united in God's good news for the world. We invite all to receive the bread and wine of the Lord's table offered in the parking area of Messiah Lutheran Church offered and please note the change of time beginning beginning today from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock a.m. on Sunday mornings. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great gift of love, your Son, Jesus Christ. May we who have received this sacramental meal bear the light of his love into the world. To your glory and for the healing of our, our world, we pray. Amen. The Congregation of Messiah Lutheran Church thanks you for joining our worship this morning. We continue to invite you to join us each Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m. We are also pleased to extend our heartfelt invitation to all of those who wish to join us for public worship each Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m. And now may the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Now may we go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>